Hello and welcome to our latest webinar, an introduction to beam analysis using SOLIDWORKS. My name is Alex Brigliano. So in this webcast, we will look at what beam elements are and how we use them in a simulation study. So first off, uh, what are beam elements? Beam elements are used in simulation studies to greatly simplify studies of structural members, thus optimizing performance. So in the images you can see, on the left there's a structural member and on the right, it shows you how SOLIDWORKS deals with that structural member or a web mission as a beam element. The geometry is replaced by a line with connection points at both ends and the cross section is accounted for mathematically. Results can be rendered as a simple tube or as the same profile as the original structural member. So when do we use beam elements? Beam elements are used when the part becomes thin in two directions uh, and the length of the beam should be 10 times larger than the di largest dimension of its cross section. So the framework is ideal. However, in our model, there are not only structural members, there is sheet metal, which are the brackets on the tanks, and also solids, which are the lugs on the framework. So what happens when we have a combination of different geometry? Um, we use a mixed mesh. So we can run studies combining solids, shells, which are sheet metal parts, and beam elements. So at this stage, we're going to switch to solid works. So this is the assembly that we're going to be working on. And this is something that I used to make. It's a, it's a simplified version of a two-part mixing and metering machine. So one tank uh, would be filled with resin and the other tank filled with hardener. Both liquids would be pumped down tubes to a dispensing gun where it would be mixed and dispensed. Now, when I was in involved in designing these, we didn't have any simulation tools. And I I'm pretty sure that we would sometimes over-engineer this framework uh, to be confident that it could take the weight of the tanks when full of liquid. Um, the frame would be moved to the different locations using the lifted lugs that are welded to the top of the frame. So that's these things here. Okay, so before we, we start our study off, um, I've, I've simplified this and the reason that I've done that is because I only want to include in this simulation so the, com the components that I think will have any sort of bearing on the results. So I've omitted the gun and the, the tubes and, and everything else. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at the stages in the process now. Uh, we'll start a new study. And I'll call this one webinar. Okay, so the stage is in the process. First off, we need to define the material. So if we look at the parts folder here, you'll notice that everything in here has a material um, next to it. And the reason for that is that simulation will automatically use the material defined in the model. Uh, but you can change this specifically for a study, uh, which can be handy if you want to do a quick comparison between uh, various materials. We then need to define the different element types. So SOLIDWORKS will automatically analyze weldment structural members as beams and sheet metal as shells. Um, shells are, are basically a way of simplifying the mesh for sheet metal. Um, essentially, sheet metal is meshed as a surface and the thickness of the sheet is defined in the mesh, it's, mesh settings itself. So um, again, it's, it's just a way of simplifying the model. Uh, the different mesh types are shown by different symbols in the tree. So, if we look here, all our lifting lugs have meshed as solids as represented by the symbol next to it. Uh, our sheet metal parts have meshed as surfaces or, or shells, um, as you can see from the symbol next to it. And if we drill down into our frame where our cut list is, uh, all our structural members are solved as beams. Okay, so it's done all of the work for us there, but let's say you've you've modeled something manually and it's uh, meshed as a solid and you want to mesh it as a, as a beam, you can right click on it, 
treat it as a bean, or if you want it to be a shell, for instance, we can just define it as a shell instead. Okay, next up we have to calculate the join. So this is done for you automatically. However, in some instances you may want to merge joints if they're too close. Uh, and you may also want to specify different joint types, but on the whole, you don't really need to touch that. Uh, the joint groups um, are represented by the purple dots, which just show you how the, the beams connect to each other. So perhaps if there was an angle brace in this corner here, uh, you might want to me uh, merge those joints together to form one. Okay, uh, we then have to define uh, contact types. So this is quite important. Uh, global contacts do not work between different element types. So therefore you have to define the uh, contacts manually. Um, so if we go to our model and we look at our uh, global contact, you'll notice it says bonded, but where the lugs sit on the frame and where the brackets for the tank sit on the frame, um, we need to manually uh, specify the contact set there. So we'll look at doing that. Uh, if we right click on the uh, connections folder, we can go to contact set. Uh, we'll just pin this on and we'll set that to bonded. So within here, you'll notice that I can specify beams and um, I can go ahead and make my selections. Now, just before I do that, it can be a pretty good idea to make use of exploded views if you have one, just to make the uh, selection process of, of faces and edges, etc., easier here. So, um, we'll start our contact set again. I'll, uh, I'll set that to bonded. We'll select beams, we'll pin that on, and then we'll just zoom in on this area here. Select the beam first and then we'll select the face that connects to the beam. And for our next one, we'll do something similar again, just selecting through geometry like so. Okay, now I would do that for for all of those, but just for the purpose of this demonstration, I have them all, all pre-done for me. So if we look at our contact sets in, in this version, you can see uh, that everywhere where the frame connects to the solid, we have a contact set for that. Now you can group those differently, you can group them all together or just to make it easier to manage, I've, I've grouped them separately. And next up, I have to define my uh, my fixtures and my loads. So um, we'll start with, with the fixings. Um, I'm just going to simply fix the model on the log. So I'm just going to use my G key uh, to make it easy to select. like so. Now if you look, uh, I've actually selected uh, the whole cylindrical face. Um, now if I was more interested in the lug's performance, perhaps I would split the face where uh, at the point of contact between the lug and the chain used for lifting it. But for the purpose of this demonstration, the, the whole face is fine. Okay, uh, the next challenge I have is working out how much force is going to be generated by the weight of the tanks when full of liquid. So we'll have a quick look at the tank now. Okay, so there it is. So actually what I've done here is I've modeled not only the tank itself, but I've also modeled the volume of liquid inside it as a solid. Now what I'm going to do with that volume of liquid is, is give it its own material um, so I've created a resin material here, for instance, and I've applied a density to it. So what happens is when I apply that material, based on the density that uh, I've used, it's going to calculate an accurate weight. And if we look at the mass properties, 
uh, that's the, the weight that's been generated. So uh, that's our mass. And also I'm going to take note of this, uh, this center of mass here as well. The reason I'm doing that will become clear shortly. So we'll close this down and we'll go back to our, our model. Okay, so in order to simplify this even further, what I'm going to do is actually exclude the tanks from the, uh, the analysis. So you imagine meshing and um, solving the study with those tanks in will we'll use up quite a lot of resource. Uh, by removing them or excluding them from the anal analysis, I'm, I'm taking away some of the overheads. We'll just exclude those from the analysis like so. Right, so um, I'm going to rep represent the tank instead by using a remote mass. So to add this remote mass, we'll just simply click on the external loads folder and we'll go to remote load mass. Uh, we'll define the type as load mass and we'll select the faces that we want to um, be connected to this remote mass. So we're just selecting the bracket faces like so. Okay, we're just doing the uh, resin tank to begin with. Okay, it's then asking me for a reference coordinate system. Now what I've done is I've created coordinate systems at the origin of both the resin tank and the harder tank. So we'll select the resin there and, and you can see its location. Right, now from here, I'm going to, to just type in um, the values that we got from the center of gravity in the tank for the location of the remote mass. So that is going to be 748.58 and I'm also going to type in the overall mass of the uh, of the tank as well which works out to 1871.98 kilograms okay so we can see uh, the resin net uh, we'll do the same with the hardener now so another remote load mass um, we'll select the, the faces again so let's just come in and select those faces like so again we'll use our own coordinate system We've got one specified at the origin of the hardener tank and the location for this is going to be 571.99 and the mass will be 588.34 kilograms. Okay, now, um, in reality, um, there would be some resistance um, between the brackets uh, and the tank walls, and I'm going to presume that there would be sufficient resistance to stop them from from moving towards those tank walls. Um, so we're going to add some other other thick fixings to account to allow for that. So if we right click on our fixtures folder, add fixed geometry, go to our advanced settings here, I can pick all of those same faces again and I'm going to select the top plane as my reference to me uh, direction and I'm going to say you can only move in one direction along that plane so it can basically now just move along the y-axis I now need to add um, gravity 
and you can see that it will default to 9.81 meters per second squared about the top plane. And we're now ready to mesh our, our model. So if we click on mesh, we'll mesh it as fine as it will go. And you'll notice that it will mesh uh, very quickly. If this was meshing as solids, it would take much, much longer. We'll now click on run. And again, uh, we'll run this live. You'll see that it will sell very fast for us as well. So we'll just give that a minute or so to, to solve. Okay, so it's solved now. And as you would expect, we get uh, various results um, in our results folder. Okay, so we'll look at the stress plot first. If we edit the definition of that, you'll notice that I can display the results for the solids and shells, or I can display the results for the beams. I can't do both at the same time. Um, when I have solids and shells um, selected, I get the following stress plot um, options. And when I do beams, I get a different set of uh, results that I can output to. Um, so uh, we'll set that to upper bound and axial and bending. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the, the beam plot. You can see it will render as a tube initially, but if I, uh, if I edit the definition, I can actually render the beam profile like so. And based on on what we've uh, selected we can see the ma maximum stress on the beams is around 170 mega pascals and the yield strength of AISI 304 is um, 206.81 uh, mega pascals so we're a bit close for comfort there now uh, if we look at the displacement plot you'll see that it uh, renders everything at the same time. And based on our study, we get a displacement of around about five uh, millimeters. Now, if we want to run simulations on different variations uh, of the assembly, we can simply right click on the um, study and duplicate it. Similarly, um, we can create a brand new one if we want. Uh, I have got some variants in here where I've uh, done one as a plain carbon steel material. And I've also done one uh, with an additional member, which is just referencing a different configuration of the frame assembly. So I hope that gives you a, a good idea of uh, or good overview of beam analysis. Um, If you do um, have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, just for your reference, we have a webinar every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Um, we've got Worldments next week, then uh, an introduction to Enterprise PDM, and then electrical routing following that. Okay, if you, uh, if you want to contact us for any reason, um, feel free to, to give us a call or send us an email. Thank you for watching.